Pivot wave dash is literally like seven button presses within like four frames. <laughs> yeah. All right, stream. Uh, I think we just came back online. I'm going to wait out, see if I see some stream chat. If I do, I will continue on. Oh, perfect wave lines. Ooh. Yes. I do predict it taking off, yeah. Uh, it's just better, so. Uh, better for certain characters more than others, maybe. Like, they're not bad, they're just harder. Um, it's, I don't know, it's hard to tell. I can't tell yet if it's better for certain characters than it is for others. I don't know. Okay, uh, so we got stream chat now. See you later, dude. Uh, okay, so we got stream chat. Uh, so basically, uh, where's the camera at? All right, here's the deal, bros. Um, you want like you want to think about? All right. Yeah. Okay. So basically, the, the only difference of this controller, like the right hand side is all the same stuff. It's just like normal buttons. The left hand side, though, is where it's different, right? You have your normal cardinal directions, right? But then you have these modifiers, and the, these are what makes the Smashbox special. Uh, so this is Y1, and, and this is Y2. This is X1, and this is X2. And then, and then if you press X1 and X2 together, you get X3, and same with Y3, right? And, and what that kind of means is that, like, when you press them in combination, uh, with an up or down button, it's going to be like X1 plus up is equal to like going barely up. X2 plus up is like more so up. X3 plus up is like m even more up. Uh, so with that explanation, um, I'll show like exploits. Uh, the first one is that you could choose perfect basically analog angles for anything, uh, such as like jumping backwards. Uh, I could do like a tiny jump backwards, I could do a full jump backwards, I could do a medium jump backwards, I could do any angle in between. So I could do stuff like, uh, I like to jump backwards and then drift forward. Like, to me that looks sick. Uh, um, the same with your wave dash angles, right? So let's do, uh, which, which folks fox are you? Your green fox. So I want you to walk all the way to the ledge like this, teeter cancel, and then wave dash back as far as you can. Okay, so check out this max angle that this thing is able to hit. Without an ata. Yeah. That's double yours. Uh, Mighty Guy, it is harder to play because it's a higher BPM, but you get more precision for it. Uh, and so check out like his wave dash angle, right? I did my max distance, but I could also do uh, a normal distance, which is closer to his. Uh, or I could do, you know, a slightly larger one. Uh, or I could even do the tiniest one. Check this out. It takes me like five, six, seven, eight, nine, just to cover one, one platform. Uh, so that's pretty sick, right? Uh, so basically, you have six spacing with your whatever you want. Um, and, uh, oh, I like the wavelands. Perfect distance wavelands. Woo! It's, it, to me, it's like, that's amazing. Look how cool it looks when I do an air immediately. <laughs> so cool. Uh, oh, also, uh, your perfect wave dash angle will also give you a perfect ledge dash. It'll take me a little bit, but uh, we'll see. I'll get it eventually. There we go. Perfect ledge dash distance. It's in there. <laughs> Do the hacks money. Um, you get a lot of sick stuff like that, right? Uh, okay, so that's basically your Y1 button. Uh, it does the perfect wave dash angles and it does the perfect ledge dash angles. Uh, it also does up tilt um, and it doesn't tap jump. So I'm sitting here, I'm holding Y1 and I'm pressing up and I won't get a tap jump. Uh, but I will get it up tilt. And that's kind of what allows me to go for these pivot up tilts like this, which is just a sick neutral game tool for a lot of characters like Fox, Marth, uh, and whatever. Like lots of characters have good up tilts. Um, the pivot up tilt uh, is really hard though. Like you have, to pre you have to press backwards and then frame perfectly, press four buttons the next frame. So it's not like it's easy, uh, but it is consistent if you if you practice hard. Um, 
So that, those are basically the things you can do with your Y1 press. Uh, an, a funny like mistake you can make with your Y1 press, right, is that if you try to like down B, you're just gonna get laser. So uh, if you forget to like, if you like max distance wave dash to the ledge like this, and then you try to do this, but you forget to let go of Y1, you're gonna fall off laser, right? Uh, because it just does laser. <laughs> so you're just, you're just gonna pretty much die. Uh, Lie said it's not a one button up tilt, it's a three button up tilt, and for do doing a pivot, it's like a five button up tilt, so it's not a one button up tilt at all. Um, so, and then then we have the X1 button. Uh, X1 is walk. Uh, you could like release it and walk faster, and then you could start pressing it again to walk slower again, like that. Uh, this is also how you uh, do the PC drop on the hitbox. Um, another notable thing about it is that. It's how you do uh, pivot forward tilts. You have to press back and then X1 and then uh, and then A, and you could get pivot forward tilts, which isn't that great for Fox, but is great for Sheik or Barth. Uh, you know, again, lots of characters have good forward tilts. Uh, and then the, the last thing I think for X1 is that it allows you to turn around laser without side being. As long as you're holding X1 and you press back and do a, and do B, you won't get a side B uh, ever and you'll just get the turnaround lasers. Uh, so that's a sick exploit of it. Um, well, we can't play, but you could try it out if you want. Anybody, any of you guys could try it out. Like, I don't care. Uh, um, uh, yes, it will be turning legal. Let me, let me tell you what. Uh, then we have our Y2 button. Uh, Y2 is good for doing stuff like, uh, it's basically the most important thing is shield dropping, obviously. So if you hold R and then you hold Y2 and then you press down, you're gonna get shield drops. Uh, and it allows you to like, um, just be really like clean with your shield drops. You're not gonna get spot dodges. See, if I'm holding Y2 and I press down, I'll never spot dodge. So uh, just shield dropping without spot dodging is really good. And you can do stuff like uh, shield drop shine. Come up here and, and jab my shield for me. I'm over here. So shield drop shine is really good. I don't know if you guys know that. <laughs> yes, this is gonna be legal. Let me tell you what. I'm 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 ex I'm playing in Genesis on this hitbox, and uh, it's gonna be legal for that tournament, and that will set the precedent uh, for its legality. And after that. Um, I'll, I'll start Kickstarter for actually getting it mass-produced so everybody can use it. That's the game plan right now. Uh, X2 is the last button that I haven't gone over yet, and that's basically just your medium walk. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't really do anything that special other than the medium walk that I know of. Uh, the one thing is that it lets you like tilt your shield, and then if you also hold Y2, you can get a shield drop while tilting your shield forward, uh, which is pretty cool, and you'll you'll get the drift. Uh, after your shield drop as well. Uh, hey, you covered up my stream chat. Can you um, can you uncover it? There's like, yeah. Uh, so recovery is one of those things. Uh, uh, it's okay, so I'll go over the recoveries. Um, basically, the way it's gonna be is it's gonna be like you had to memorize. Like, all of your up Bs are gonna have either, like, it's gonna be a diagonal, right? You're either gonna up B and do up right, uh, up left, down right, down left, right? So it's all gonna have those inputs. But then you have to memorize what combos of the tilt modifiers will give you different angles. And we can go over the four basic ones, all going up left. So if I go up left and hold Y1, I get that. If I go up left and hold Y2, I get a, a higher angle. If I hold up left and get X1, I get like the quote unquote mangle. Uh, if I hold up left and get X2, I get that angle. But you can also do any combo of these buttons. Um, so uh, you can get like, I think I think the number is 56 angles. Uh, I'm, I don't quote me on that, but I think that's a number uh, for, for getting your Firefox, but you would have to memorize all of the angles that were come from like different tilts combinations. So that's how your up B happens. Uh, doesn't this make it a lot easier uh, to do really hard tech? Uh, no, it actually doesn't. Like, 
the thing is, guys, I'm making this look easy, but it's not actually easy. The only reason I make it look easy is because I have it in my house and I practice it all the time, like six hours a day. So, uh, in, in reality, a lot of the tech is really hard. Like, it's still going to be the same frame perfect inputs for all this crap that you're trying to do. Like, you can still die doing ledge dash just as much as you will on a GameCube controller. Um, what it what it demonstrates is the difference between uh, consistency and difficulty. It's for example, let's let's take dashing back as an example. On a GameCube controller, it's impossible. Look at the Green Fox, right? It's impossible to dash back, and every time, a lot of times you'll get tilt turns. So if you try to do dash back, jump cancel grab, you'll inevitably just get a turn around grab, no matter how much you practice it, because. The GameCube controller has a flawed dash back. Like it has to pass through the tilt turn zone, and that means that if you're trying to do stuff like smash turn there in place, uh, certain controllers are not able to do it consistently or well at all. See, like I'm doing the input perfectly, but I'm just not getting it all the time. Uh, whereas on this, uh, you're never gonna you're never gonna miss it up. And even though it's just as difficult as it is on the GameCube controller. Uh, if you're still perfect at it, you will get it every time. Whereas if you're perfect on the GameCube controller, you'll only get it 80% of the time, or maybe 70% of the time, or however percentage of the time your controller feels like it. So uh, I think that it just demonstrates the difference between consistency and difficulty. Uh, okay. Would it not be j better to just have a joystick on there for recoveries? No, it's not better because you have to understand I have way more control than a joystick will ever have on this thing. Like the fact that I could choose all these specific angles and everything like that is actually way better. Uh, dude, it is n it is not a macro to uh, be able to hold two like press three buttons and get a shield drop. That's a macro is a one button that does. Uh, an input like that. Like a macro of a shield drop would be I could press shield drop and no matter what my shield angle is I'll, I'll still get the uh, shield drop. And besides people are just gonna be like salty about shield dropping or whatever but uh, just basic stuff is harder like just doing a shuffle in the air or whatever like you're gonna take it's gonna take you months to be able to do this again or whatever not months but you're gonna have to practice this again and like the up B's are harder uh, stuff like pivot wave dash is harder uh, just because certain things that are like quote unquote meta are easier doesn't mean that the controller is not hard. Like honestly, I will just like anybody, if, any of you who put your hands on it will not be anybody for at least a month. Like you're just not going to win a friendly on it for like a month. So it's not, it's not easy. Uh, how do you shield angle? Uh, okay, so shield angling is done by you basically have to use the tilt modifier to start the angle and then release the modifier to, to get the angle further, right? So I start it and then I release it uh, further. Uh, so Rain Catch Fire says, this is super unfair for whoever's playing against it. And I like it when people make that point because I want to make a card argument that any GameCube controller that you're playing against is going to be super unfair against whatever GameCube. Like, two GameCube controllers are already unfair because some game controllers are better at dashing back, some are better at shield dropping, uh, some are better at, like, doing whatever. Like, uh, w on a hitbox, if you have two people are using a hitbox, that's the most a even playing field you could possibly have because there's never any variance in the controller. So, I will, like, it, like I agree that... Uh, the hitbox is better than a uh, GameCube controller, but there's also GameCube controllers that are better than your GameCube controller, and it's like a significant difference because they can do shield drops perfectly, or, or they could do dash backs like more consistently. There's actually uh, GameCube controllers with something called a pentiometer glitch, and that makes it so that they have like a 95% dash back success rate when your control stick has at best an 80%. So literally, there's already unfairness, and people have notched Kadano controllers. They have all this stuff, so it's already not fair. I hate to break it to you guys. Uh, all GameCube controllers are not the same. You're just you're just wrong. What's up? Can you like play more with your perfect pivot down tilt? Perfect pivot down tilt. Yeah, that's it. No contest. It just came to my head. Nah, it's not. It's not more uneven. Two people on a GameCube controller are the mo is the most even playing field. And honestly, it's gonna take me like six months just to be able to beat anybody on this thing. So that's what I get for putting in the hard work to uh, to to earn a, like better tech skill. Uh, okay, so perfect pivot down to let's see. 
<laughs> West, uh, perfect pivot up tilt too. I like to do this, like where I dash forward and then I dash back and then I pivot down tilt. You see? See that? <laughs> and look at Mars' wave dash length. Yeah, I'm messing it up because I'm used to the fox jump squat. Yeah, he could do a uh, pivot forward tail as well. This is a perfect wave dash distance, yeah. Uh, I keep doing the fox jump squat. There you go. Yeah, that's perfect wave dash distance. Uh, okay. Can I do what? Ah, uh -huh, that sounds really hard. Is that possible? Are you trolling me? That's pretty hard. Um, okay. Uh, I've kind of lost track of. I've lost track of a uh, of the stream chat. Um, okay. Somebody says, uh, "What if you don't want the perfect distance? Can you shorten it?" Yeah, you can actually do the shortest wet wave dashes. Even uh, you can do medium wave dashes. You can do it pretty much any wet wave dash distance you want. Um, so yeah, in terms of being able to choose angles and anything like that, this this thing has has all everything you're looking for for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. You guys are just gonna have to uh, wait and see because I'm going to kickstart it after Genesis, and uh, it's just gonna happen. <laughs> so, um, as far as like it giving you more options, uh, again, I don't really think that's true. Uh, it just makes them more consistent. The only option that you have on this that you don't really have on a GameCube controller is the is the pivot up tilt. Um, but other than that, I mean, well, let's see. Uh, let's LRA start. Anything I can do on a on this, I can do on a GameCube controller. Unless the GameCube controller sucks, which happens a lot of the time. Uh, so I'll, I'll just prove that by doing like pivot down tilts or whatever. I just quarter circle down and press A. Yeah. Which one am I? Yeah, so I can pivot down tilt or whatever. Uh, um, this thing actually has less less angles for Firefox than a GameCube controller. Uh, so, Geodude says, well, I think that people won't make the effort to uh, to learn it when they're already 15 years in the metagame. I think that's an interesting point, and, and here's the way I think about it. I think the newer a player is, the more likely that they'll, they'll be interested in doing this. And I also th think that this is more likely to bring in people who are in the FGC playing Marvel or whatever and are held back because they don't want to play uh, on the GameCube controller. And then when they see the hitbox, they're going to be more interested uh, in playing this. And, I, and I've talked to people who are, who, are, who, are, who are like this, or people who have been playing Melee for uh, only six months and come from Marvel, and, and and for them, the excitement to change over to a hitbox is, is, is really high because it, it, it's more familiar for them. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to phase out GameCube controllers either. Um, but we don't need to phase out GameCube controllers. It's not like you can't just use a GameCube controller if you still like it or whatever. Uh, you know, I, I don't think the goal is to phase out the GameCube controller. It's just to give people an alternative that is better. You guys got to understand, like, uh, the GameCube controller is not the perfect tool to, to play Melee on because of the dash back flaw uh, and, and the flaws of just, like, your analog stick degrading over time. Like, it's just not the perfect tool. So it's it's good to have an alternative that's a better tool. I always think it's kind of like caveman to be like, I don't want a better tool. Like, let me keep using this rock to play my game because uh, I, w I would not want to have a hammer, you know? 
Like, it just doesn't really make any sense. It's kind of like dumb, right? So how do I do the take down the Uh Okay, so basically what you have to practice first is just quarter circling by uh, like going back into down like that so that you can just do crouch out of pivot like this. And then once you do that, you obviously just press A. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the retail price for it is going to be about $200. Somebody has already said that in chat. Uh, and I know that's expensive, but you guys just got to compare it to, uh, first of all, the fact is that they have like uh, Sanwa buttons, which is like some of the best buttons on the market. Uh, and you got to just compare it to other fight sticks in, in just the FGC. Our, our like $200 is very average for, for, for this type of market. Like there's just no way. This product is too good to give it any cheaper. It's just like, it's got like, uh, very well built case. It's it's got like the best buttons it could possibly have. You know what I mean? It's just like it couldn't really be any cheaper. No. How much? Uh, if a top rank player, uh, it's a problem. Uh, rain, rain catch fire. You keep saying it has more angles when it literally has less. Like the GameCube controller has like 250 or something, and this one has 56. So uh, it just doesn't. Um, and as far as the expensive thing is, it's like, uh, you guys got to realize people buy a new controller at, like every six months at least. And some players like Armada or Music King are buying a new controller every one month or even every tournament sometimes. And, and, and the Kadano controllers are already very expensive. If you buy just like three Kadano controllers, that's already as much as, uh, as this thing was. Um... I did not make this myself. Oh, so another cool thing that uh, this hitbox is going to have in the in the retail release is going to be a switch that can go from uh, melee to PM to Smash Four, and it will it will like it will like uh, yeah it'll it'll just basically give you the angles that are actually relevant to that game. Yeah, I don't, I don't see the argument for consistency being a bad thing. <laughs> like, uh, that just doesn't make any sense to me. And I had like, why would consistency be a bad thing? I love pivot up tilt. <laughs> That's my favorite. Uh, okay, so I, I pretty much have covered um, everything. Would you have beaten red with the hitbox? Absolutely, absolutely. If I had developed a hitbox by the time I came to this tournament, it would have been for sure beating everybody. Uh, Kadano controllers are not 25. A standard controller is difficult to get for 25. Kadano controllers can be anywhere like from 70 to like $100. Uh, Oh, also, guys, you got to understand that this controller is also ergonomically way better than a GameCube controller. A GameCube controller, your hands are clenched, the R buttons are uh, terrible, and, you know, like, it's just moving your left thumb like that is not, is not good for your hands. Uh, this controller, you can keep your back straight, the buttons are very gentle, and uh, you can have your fingers spread out instead of being clenched. So, ergonomically speaking, it's also going to save everybody's hands because, dude, like, <laughs> we're going to have to stop playing Melee just because everybody's hands are going to break. <laughs> Uh, rain, rain catch fire. Pivot up tilts are the only thing, though. Like you can't say like Firefox angles. Like I, I don't know. You, I'll give you pivot up tilts, but I'm not giving you Firefox angles. Uh, I don't really know how to do it, but you can moonwalk. You can moonwalk for sure. I've seen a guy do it like perfectly, but I'm myself not good at. It. I think I just need to walk into like a cor a half circle. I don't know how to do it. Why can't you keep your back straight with a GameCube controller? That's like you can't, but on a GameCube controller, most people rest their forearms on their thighs like this, and they put weight on their on their thighs. And your carpal tunnel runs through here, so if you're putting weight all down this part of your your uh, wrist, you're going to be giving yourself more hand problems. What's up? Are you like doing a crouch? That's weird. 
Yeah, I think this is all I got. Um, this is all I got to show you guys. Like I said, everything else is just kind of the same. Like you just have buttons on the right that are the same as your buttons on a GameCube controller. But I'll keep asking. I'll keep answering questions. I blustered out a tournament, but you gotta understand that I've not practiced the GameCube controller in so long, and uh, I'm like switching fully to the hitbox. So I kind of, ex I kind of should have expected to do badly, but I still get pissy when I fucking lose. So, uh, but yeah, I busted out this tournament. I lost to Red and Hugs. Like to me. Losing to Samus as Falcon, that's not acceptable. <laughs> but whatever. Uh, can this be used on a PS4? I don't think so. It's just a regular GameCube. Um, whatever. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a GameCube controller, basically. You can use it to play uh, Super Mario Sunshine or whatever. Won't many TOs not let you use the hitbox? I really don't think it's going to be a problem. I'm going to use it at Genesis uh, for sure. And by that time, I'll have talked to pretty much every member of the community about it. And people are going to see at Genesis that I'm not going to be like some god player after three months of playing or whatever. I'm going to get my ass beat at Genesis because the controller is really hard to learn. And, uh, and then people are going to realize like that it's just something that should not be banned. Trust me, guys. It's gonna be legal. Uh, I I will swear on anything. Yeah, Blur has said before that he thinks it'll never be legal, but he also has not talked to me about it. So, uh, and he doesn't like. Most people who are saying it's not going to be legal have never like touched one before, so uh, you have to take their you, you know opinions with a grain of salt. Uh, top players who I've shown it to are are all for it, uh, including S2J, uh, Drug Fox, Hugs, um, Mac D, Wife. I mean, Wife's not a top player, but still like important people. Uh, Gimmer is all for it. You know what I mean? So I have a lot of support in the community already for it. All right, stream. Uh, would you play Fox with it? Or are you just demonstrating? Yeah, my plan is to play Fox, Falcon, Marth. So I'm gonna be a tri main now. Now we've already had a Twitter um, vote with like more than like 3,000 or 2,500. Uh, votes and people have already voted in favor of, of legalizing it. So, and that's before people are even fully uh, understanding how amazing it is. So, uh, it's definitely not the thing where there's any kind of majority saying that it should not be legal. Uh, Geodude say, um, he said, so on one hand you say it's not going to be that good because it's not difficult or it's really difficult to learn, but on the other hand you say it's going to be better than a GameCube controller. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I've, I keep saying like this demonstrates the difference between consistency and difficulty. Like people say it's easy, but it's not easy. It's more consistent. That's, there's a difference between that. Like I, I will have like more consistent tech skill, but I have to earn it just like you have to earn it on a GameCube controller. I have not had a chance to show it to Mewtwo King yet, but I'm sure he would love it. You know how much Mewtwo King complains about his controller not backdashing, not ledge dashing, not doing all this stuff? Can a standard controller not be as good as a fight pad ergonomically? Absolutely not. No way. No way. Uh, man, stream chat moving fast now. Would this be more or less optimal than playing with DK Bongos? 
I mean, you got to give DK Bongos a try. Like, you know, I haven't given them a fair opportunity. So I have to... I have to... I can't comment on that yet. I don't know how their shield drops are going to be, though. <laughs> Uh, no, this does not pull differently. Um, so you, we still have the problem of like input polling being an issue, and th this controller does not fix that, unfortunately. Um, but the reason that it dash backs consistently is that it does not go through the tilt turn zone uh, to get to dash back. It goes directly from neutral to the smash turn zone. So no matter what, it's going to pull as a smash turn. That's why it can do it consistently. Uh, no, I've already said the shield drops are easier. I don't know what you guys want from me. Um, but like I said, it's compensated for other things being harder, such as like pivot wave dash or just doing Firefox angles. Uh, yes, dash back works on some controllers better. And like I said, that's already an uneven playing field. Uh, there's something called a pantheometer glitch, uh, which basically means that your control stick is going to be like 95% consistent and dashing back, whereas a standard GameCube controller is never really going to be past 80, so um, there's already GameCube controllers that are literally just better than yours at doing dash back. You can moonwalk, but I don't know how to do it, but you can moonwalk. I've seen people do it for sure, so. I just, I have not practiced this because I'm not a moonwalker. <laughs> uh, I disagree with it intimidating new players. When I talk to new players, they're friggin' hype about it, so. Uh, I disagree with that, like, actually completely. Uh, yeah, how the fr- It could- it could do 56 angles for up B, not 8. Alright, I don't know what people are talking about now. Yeah, that's one of the things, like, the price barrier is that you don't have to ever replace it. You just have to replace buttons if they go bad or whatever. Smashbox has 36 Firefox angles. I don't know. I don't know if that's correct or not. I, I honestly am not sure, so I don't have this answer vetted. But I'm telling you, it's enough. Like, the, the angles are, are plenty. You, you're not going to be like, wow, I couldn't hit that angle. That's never going to happen. How does it have so many angles? Because you have four buttons that you can press in combination to get um, any different combination will give you a different angle. Um, so, like, I don't know. As 56, because you could do like upright plus like Y1, upright plus Y2, upright plus Y3, upright plus X1, X, upright plus X2, upright plus X3, upright plus X3 plus Y1, upright plus X2 plus Y1. There's so many. There's so many angles. Uh, new players will feel at a disadvantage for not owning one. I mean, like, I'm trying to just make it so that it gets mass-produced. Like, what can, what can I do other than make it available for sale? <laughs> Dude, I have people who are like, I'm going to buy five. Drinking Food, the PM player, you guys should talk to him. He's so hyped about it for PM. He literally said I'm gonna, he's going to buy, like, five of them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is multi shining easy? No, it's literally the same difficulty.
Uh, okay. When can you buy this? Uh, look out for basically the Kickstarter is going to happen after Genesis, and then hopefully it gets Kickstarted immediately, uh, and then you can buy it right then. <laughs> How is this on the hands of somebody who's going to be playing it for six, five to six hours a day? It's literally amazing, like ergonomically speaking. It's m like miles ahead of the GameCube controller. Uh, you're gonna be seeing my fox at Genesis, not my falcon. My falcon will take a while to come out again on a GameCube controller or on the hitbox. Like I'll need my fox to be perfect before I start falcon. Have I worked on the development of this at all? I've had minor contributions, but by far, like most of it was by the the actual creator. But I I can like give him my feedback and stuff. You know, he ta he takes what I like say seriously. Can you easily wave dash various things? Uh, I guess I'm back. I'm not retired anymore, but it's like totally different now because I'm not playing on the GameCube controller and I'm not playing Falcon. So uh, who knows how good I'm gonna be? Like I'm, I, I really don't even know. I shouldn't say I'm not playing Falcon because I'm still gonna play like him and Marth and Fox. But like for the next however long it takes me to get good at Fox, I'm not gonna be playing Falcon. Whew. Yeah, you could, uh, I mean, again, it's the same difficulty as wave dashing on a normal controller. If anything, it has, w like, more button presses, but you can, like, wave dash different different distances. You get this distance, this distance, uh, a normal distance, like, the longest distance. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You get a lot of distances. Do you think some characters are better with one controller or another? I don't really know. I don't really have an answer for that. Like, uh, it's too hard for me to figure that out. How easy are pivot up tilts? Pivot up tilts are very difficult. Um, they are like, you have to press backwards and then you have to press the next frame, uh, one, two, three, four, four buttons. So it's like a five button frame perfect press. So it's pretty hard. Uh, using a controller like this, would it be possible to put macros on a controller? Sure, I mean, yeah, but it's also possible to put macros on a GameCube controller. <laughs> you can like macro your D-pad to be anything you want. So, uh, you just have to, like, you can't stop people from, like, not having integrity. <laughs> but most people are not, like, interested in that type of stuff, dude. Like, the, the Pichu cheater kid, like, immediately got, like, disgraced, you know what I mean? Like, people are not interested in cheating, in my experience. Uh, tilts are done by using the um, analog modifier. You have four analog modifiers, and basically X1 and Y1 are the ones you use for tilt. Um, so X1 plus forward is going to be forward tilt. Um, Y1 plus up is going to be up tilt and down tilt. And then like you would do like uh, Y1 plus X1 plus down right in order to get like a down angle angle forward tilt. And then you'd get like um, upright to get an upward angle forward tilt. The Pichu Cheater Kid, you guys don't remember him? Uh, he was like in Pittsburgh, I think, uh, he's a kid who like modded his setup so that he had a Pichu who, that was like the best character in the game with like a disjointed down tilt that's like large and then Mars down tilt and like an invincible Nair, an invincible up air and like just crazy broken Pichu. And he like won tournaments with it. <laughs> Am I completely done using a GameCube controller? Yes, with the small exception of like weeklies that I need to go to for money. But yeah, other than that, I am definitely completely done. He modded the setup. Yeah, yeah. I was just using an example of like the one time that I've heard of people really cheating is like that, and you know, it's just not a common thing in the in the melee community. People people are very prideful. They don't want to win by cheating, in my experience. Turn off the opponent's hitboxes with D-pad, is that a real thing? That's crazy. I didn't know about that. I didn't hear about that. Can you customize the buttons? Uh, no, you can't customize the layout itself. But I suppose maybe you could like map the buttons to be like like switch the R and the Z location or something, but I don't know. I don't really. I, I'm not. I'm not for sure on that because I'm not um, the, the technical guy in terms of this.
can you show me where the angle button modifiers are? Uh, can you guys see this? Oh wait, there's a closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's obviously the better option. Uh, these are the angle modifiers. Uh, we have X1, X2, Y1, Y2, and then if you press them together, it's Y3, X3. Can Hex Money Broken Hands use this thing? Well, he might be too far gone, but uh, if he had been using this thing the whole time, he would not be Hex Money Broken Hands. Whew. All right. That was pretty tiring mentally, but I feel like I answered pretty much all your questions as fast as I could uh, get some anyways. I'm hyped to play Fox, guys. Like, I love Falcon still, but uh, the fact of the matter is that having more than one character is just better. <laughs> uh, so I'm very hyped to have Fox, finally. Like, I just don't want to get counterpicked anymore, right? Like, I just want to have the advantage over people. <laughs> Uh, no, it's very comfortable. The buttons are amazing, especially. Uh, it's very comfortable. It doesn't necessarily feel like natural because we're so used to the GameCube controller, but um, it's comfortable. How will hand sizes affect the controller? Nah, I don't know. Like, I'm not. I'm not an expert on that question. Um, but hopefully, I'm gonna work with my girlfriend to uh, to come up with ideas for ergonomic aspects of it because she's a PhD student. Um, and hopefully it's just like optimal, but it's pretty good. Like, I don't think your hand size will be a problem. All plugged up then? Huh? It's all this plugged up. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we were just wrapping it all up. How does it feel to be a trader to 20GX? <laughs> I just don't care. I still am not a trader to 20GX because I help Falcon so much. So I'll never be a trader, dude. I gave him too much and I continue to give him things. Um, can this make you number one Yoshi Master? Sure, again. You just have to try really hard and practice all day. Yeah, I honestly think enough people are going to be hyped for me switching to Fox or picking up Fox. To balance out the people who are gonna shit on me and be like, right, you should play Falcon only. So it'll be cool. My Fox will be dope. Is there more input latency? No, that's completely the same. Did he just ignore that guy? I don't know what you're talking about. My Falcon is clean, but yeah, my Falcon's gonna be cleaner on this. <laughs> Let me, like, trust me. I'm still gonna play Falcon. Uh, he's gonna be even cleaner on this. But I don't, I don't want to play him against Spaces and Sheik anymore. It's too much of a struggle bus. Yeah, you have one there. Oh, Light Shield is a two-button combo now. Uh, you have the, uh, it's called Tilt LR. Uh, right here, and you have to press this in combination with R, and you get a light shield. And you can do that thing that people like doing right here. Are any of the buttons pressure sensitive? I don't know what you mean. Yo, guys, the hype thing is that Hitbox has sent me um, all this streaming equipment uh, so that I can actually, I will be making videos about all this. I'm pretty good at using Premiere. If you guys have seen my uh, f optimization fundamentals video, I'm pretty good at actually video editing. And uh, now that I have a capture card and everything, um, it's uh, it's going to be pretty pretty dope videos coming out. Uh, how big is the controller? I would say it's like, I don't know, it's a standard like fight pad size. It probably weighs about five pounds. It's, I mean, it's kind of hard to transport compared to a GameCube controller, but that's whatever. Uh, yes, it does make shield dropping super easy. Yeah. Okay. So let me walk you through it. Uh, so if you hold X1 and go forward, that's going to be a walk. 
if you release if you release X1, you're gonna start walking faster. See? Oh, okay. And then if you do backwards plus X turn X1 as you pass the ledge, you're gonna do the PC drop. See? If you walk fast and then and then do backwards plus X1, you get the PC drop. How is aerial drift? No, aerial drift is amazing on this thing. Uh, any kind of movement is gonna is just amazing. Is it possible to uh, build one yourself? I don't know. Again, like I'm not like that technical of a person. I don't really understand like circuit boards and stuff like that. So uh, I'm not. I'm just unfortunately not the person to answer that question. I mean, I'm sure it is. This guy built it himself, so <laughs> I guess it has to be possible. I'm oh, sorry, dude. <laughs> uh, Whew. Yeah, if you just try to wave dash, then you can add modifiers, like these white buttons while you're wave dashing, and you'll get different distances. So first you wave dash with just down right or down left, YR, you know, like just a normal wave dash. And then you add in a modifier, and you can do long distance ones, you can do short distance ones, you can do medium distance ones. I'm interested to see how good he can get with this thing. Yeah, I mean, you guys gotta understand, I'm already a very good player, uh, and now I'm picking up Fox and a better controller, so I'll get very good. For sure. Yes, it does just plug in via the normal GameCube controller part. I'm sorry I'm beating you up, dude. I'm nah, nah, nah. I shouldn't be. Check this out. I love that you can uh, pivot out of crouch. Look, at I can even just do an empty pivot. Look at that. Mm. So good. Yeah. So I could be crouching. You have to hold Y2 while you're holding down in order to in order to dash back out of crouch. Uh, so I could be crouching and do a pivot back air. Mm. So good. Die. <laughs> So cool. Better than before, it's an advantage. The thing is, there are good controllers and bad controllers and minor mods already allowed, so advantages of controllers are already a thing. Yeah, pretty much that, yeah. Like, you already have controllers that are way better than your controller. Yeah. Uh, well, for now it's not for sale, but the, uh, the end price will be about $200, which is rough, but you gotta compare it to actual fight sticks, which are... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You swallow that bullet and you never have to replace it. What? Uh, mine is a beta. Uh, these are both mine and they're ba they're just beta. And the reason I have them is because I'm trying. I'm like basically in charge of like spreading the word and getting them like kickstarted and stuff. I'm like what? Yeah, basically, yeah. No, any TLs that are allowing you and people to use it right now? Uh, well, I'm like I'm using it at Genesis for sure. So I already have at least one TL that's letting me use it. Um, and after that. Uh, we'll probably have like a community vote type thing on it. So I'm guessing it would also work with Wii, Wii U, PC, and all that. Yeah, if you had like a Bay Flash adapter or whatever, uh, yeah, it would probably work with all that stuff, yeah. It would work for Netplay and all that. Are the buttons Sanwa? Yes, they are. So amazing. Sanwa buttons, let me tell you guys. Uh, amazing buttons. Yes, uh, it's confirmed I will be using it at Genesis. Do you readjust your hand to get certain angles? Yes, yeah, you do. If you have to press like three modifiers plus down right, uh, I, I readjust my hand. Maybe you can find a way to not do it, but uh, that's how I do it. Uh, yeah, it is a thing, dude. Let me tell you, it's gonna it's gonna be a thing. Like seriously, look out for Genesis. After that, it's gonna be just a thing. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, what are you trying to do, laser or what? Yeah. The cool thing is that if you hold X1, you won't get the side B. Um, X1 is the one on the left here. Yeah. So you won't get side B, and you can turn around with that too. Uh, supposedly much better on the hands, but I want some long-term knowledge on that. And in fact, you can actually uh, you can you can talk to my girlfriend on Twitter. Uh, she's a PhD student in ergonomics. She's about six months out from having her PhD, and uh, you can talk to her about it. You can also talk to Dr. Caitlin McGee. Uh, my girlfriend's Twitter is uh, at Dr. Biscuits and Caitlin McGee. I I'm not sure, but if you will just look up Caitlin McGee on Twitter, you'll be able to find her, and you can talk to those people. It's it's definitely better on your hands. Do you think they could release a version that has LEDs? They're probably not going to, but maybe you could put LEDs in yourself. I don't know. <sighs> Just LR, LR, are you? Yeah. Okay, uh, so it's time for me to leave stream. Um, I am glad that I could show this to you. And uh, like I said, look out for Genesis. After Genesis, uh, I'm going to get bodied. And then I'm going to be able to kickstart it. And, you know, just support, just support the movement. Like, you guys got to get this off the ground, and then everybody can have them, you know? I got this angle. Yeah. Uh, you can't technically get every single one, but you can get like 56, so you can get a lot. Like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think double shining is actually easier, but that's coming from the. I'm personally uh, clawed the game controller always, so. For me, it was already easier to do stuff like multi-shining because my fingers are touching both the buttons and I could just go pinky ring, pinky ring, pinky ring, or whatever, pinky, or, or not pinky ring, like index middle, index middle, index middle, and just get multi shines. All right, so we're out of here. Peace out, stream. I'm sorry, I, we have to get up in like five hours. So. Uh, his flight's at 8.30, but he gets to be there an hour.